Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Building Your Empire with Sophie Zo. Today I have a really cool guest, someone from an industry I've not had yet and I don't think I will have the rest of the year. Uh, so it'll be really cool to get her perspective on, you know, my signature question for these guest episodes. So let me introduce to you Melissa Tassel. As the owner and registered interior designer of Sonura Design, alongside her team, Melissa offers design build services for custom homes and renovations using intelligent quality design and a sense of humor. She found a knack for guiding and helping clients through the entire renovation process, being able to balance pushing their boundaries with her abilities and as an empath into what they love with handling the nitty gritty details like permits, contractors, project management, and detailed designs. Today, she takes great joy in her work and passionately supports her community through volunteerism, a requirement for everyone at Sonura Design, both every Monday at Furniture Bank through her association, Arido, and as of March 22, Sonura Design donates 10% of their design fees to support their local community. She also mentors students and those starting their careers and is an author and paid speaker educating the public and her peers. Melissa, my friend, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you today because I think this conversation is going to be so unique. Uh, yes, <laughs> I, have, I have a lot. Uh, you, I had to ask you the reminder of the question. And, and, oh, uh, oh, of I, course, of course. Now, I always start yeah. you all off with the the question, what is your best advice for business owners who want to scale their business to the next level and beyond? Oh man, I have so many. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the short little one. I'm going to do some points and then you, you let me know what else, what you want to dig deep into. Okay. Um, sounds good. So one of the best pieces of advice I discovered this year is one of the best things you can do is to connect your success to the success of something you really care about. So if it's your community, if it's, um, I don't know, if it's human trafficking, if it's uh, different causes, if you tie the success of your business to that, it just brings you to a whole other level of success and a whole other level of drive uh, of supporting that. that. That came to me at the beginning of the year. Another one is process, process, process. Mm. Um, get everything out of your head. Everything. <laughs> Nothing should live in your brain anymore. It should be somewhere because the more things that live in your brain, the less someone else can do or help you with. Um, and then the next part I will say is treat your team like gold. Uh, Listen to your own instincts. Listen to your relationship with them. Don't listen to what other people have to tell you about what you should be doing because I've had some terrible advice over the years. Um, and going back to the process, um, document before you think you need to. Document how you do things. Document why you do things and things like that. It's going to help so much when you start to expand and you hire people. Oh, girl, you are a woman after my own heart. And and it's really interesting. You know, your industry is different than any other guest I've had on there and obviously way different than what I do. But you are speaking my talk, my my language. I mean, knowing what your true desire is, what your true goal is. And it's not always a money, a money, num you know, a number, a dollar amount. Um, it can be anything that drives you and motivates you, inspires you and lights you up because so many people want to do this for money and they kill themselves trying to get the money. Right. And I'm guilty of that too. I did that. I fell into that old paradigm, that old, you know, oh my gosh, you got to work hard to make money and you, you know, money's the ultimate goal and and I fell off my horse, right. as I call it, or off the wagon. And, right. and it, of course, you know, the universe comes back around and starts tapping you on the head. And then in my case, it started smacking me upside the head. And then it took a few two by fours and baseball bats to my right. head. And it's like, okay, hey, right. I, I got right. it. <laughs> right. It's very persistent, the universe. It is. Yeah. It if you don't is. listen, 
It's just going to keep telling you. Eventually, eventually, you'll just get knocked unconscious because, <laughs> because you're not listening anymore. Some people oh, don't even get it done, yeah. which is the sad part. But it, yes. kudos to you for waking up to it. Oh, yes. And of course, processes, documentation. I mean, yes, that is one of my big things that I always, you know, talk about too. And so, you know, you're in the design business and, and not just, you know, not into, I mean, yes, interior design, but I mean, inside and out technically, because you can yeah. tell them how to make everything look good. Yes, and absolutely. you can do the projects, the permits, all of those different things, because you know, there's a lot of people out there, you know, I've, I've had a, an attorney or two on the show. Attorneys have their way of doing things that are different than someone who's a coach, a consultant, a service provider of a different kind of service than you provide, than I provide. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's really, it really speaks to certain business practices, certain ideals and things apply to everybody, no matter right. what your industry yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool that you're bringing up a lot of the points that that I that speak to my heart and speak to my clients and my listeners because you know I I can imagine when they read the show notes they're going to go a registered interior designer what do they know about business right <laughs> you know? what do they know guys didn't you hear what I do for a living if I'm not stupidly organized and know how to delegate this. I can tell you how many people in my business turn to definitely turn to alcohol. I know many people who turn to uh, marijuana, weed. I know people who turn to drugs of other kinds in order to cope in this industry, especially in residential industry where I love you guys, but a lot of homeowners don't have boundaries unless you really reinforce them. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes that happen in my industry, which is, not having boundaries. It's the same as every other industry, guys. Don't let them tell you that people are going to call you nights and weekends. They're only going to do that if you let them do that. <laughs> this is every business ever. If you don't keep your boundaries, if you, I, I love Outlook. One of my best tips for people who need to work at weird hours is use Outlook, the desktop app, because you can schedule delivery. <laughs> so you can do it at like, 6 a.m. on Saturday, and it'll send Monday at 9 a.m. all the 15 million emails you responded to. It's one of my best tools for if I'm working outside hours, I don't want clients to know that. But beyond that, it's very, very important to be organized. And the more I've moved forward, the more I've met people who are way further in their career, who know so much more, have so much more experience. I've gotten as definitely gonna be right here. I've gotten a lot of admiration for my process and how organized I am. And that is because I look, I have kind of a lean startup approach, which I'm sure people who follow your podcast will know what lean startup is. It's like you keep learning, you keep tweaking, you keep learning, not in an obsessive, not in an anxious way, just you look for like this, this isn't working really well, what would work better? How could we streamline this a little bit more? And for me, in my latest times, I'm expanding like crazy right now. And I'm trying to figure out what that looks like. And I have three employees now. And a few months ago, I only had one employee. <laughs> and that's a whole other process. But part of it is I set up one, the culture I needed. So for me, I need a real team environment. I need them to treat it like it's their business. You're not going to do that if you just treat them like employees, like butts in your seat. It's not going to happen. It happens a lot in my industry. So I've, I'm kind of trailblazing a little bit on how I treat my employees and how, what team means to me. But as a result, it's meant that they really care and they really work really hard. They care about my business. They care about what goes on here. And I explain the why. And that seems like a waste of time. But I know from experience, if I explain the why, they learn better. Like, I don't have to tell them to do something again if they understand why they're doing it. So that's what I mean, like having a great relationship with your employees, especially as you build, you get someone amazing, but make sure they know they're amazing and make sure that you treat them properly. Um, it's one of the best keys because flipping over employees isn't going to help you in any industry. 
Oh, no, no. And I love that, you know, now you're speaking to yet another one of the key factors that I talk to that a lot of the other guests talk to building a team and not just putting butts in seats. It's about yep. building a group of people who are amazing at what they do, who resonate with you on all levels, not just a, yep. a work. I, I can tell you what to do by what time and you get it done and you do a good job yep. at it. You know, you build a culture, a relationship, and in some cases, you build a family. I mean, the corporate world, business, you know, independent contractors, you know, all of them, all of us, we need that interrelational connection on a deeper level. Do we need to be able to, you know, pour our hearts out and cry on our, our coworkers and our team's shoulders? No, probably not. But you know, I, I don't know if you really want your, your team coming to you and crying on your, your shoulder about, you know, their deep down, you know, personal things. Now you want to know if something's going on in their personal life, especially if it may or may not affect their work or their time away, you know, things like that. But, you know, you want to build a culture that is relational, safe, fun, because we are in this to have fun. We didn't quit day jobs. We didn't quit corporate. We didn't set up this business to be like a job that's boring and no fun and all of those right. things. We did this to be able to have fun, make money, have a life, all those different things. And all these things that we're talking about, processes, documentation. You did this to have a life, Sophie? <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's my, that's my balance. That's my balance right now. I'm working on my balance, but I'm in a, as I said, I'm in a period of unprecedented growth right now. So that's fair. It's a fair thing uh, yes. that I have my eye on that ball. But yeah, I wanted to speak to, um, I have a very close relationship with my employees and I, I mentor them in addition to just being their boss. Uh, I also like to have a very inclusive atmosphere, which means as, as you heard, I explain why I do things when I, when I correct them. I let you know the psychology behind why I'm doing it, because I know um, one of the secrets of design industry is interior designers think very differently. We solve problems differently. There's a different way we approach problem solving, and it helps in a lot of situations if you let it happen. Um, but yeah, there's so much I've learned along the way, and I, I definitely encourage listening, but also listening to your instincts, listening to coaches, listening to people around you, but listen to your instincts. Cause I've, uh, I had some challenges with some of my employees. One of my employees is basically germophobic and, a, and the pandemic hit. So imagine, I don't know, there's a swarm of spiders coming towards you and you're, you're, you know, scared of spiders. That's like the worst possible situation happened. Uh, and I had a lot of people go, well, you know, just find somebody else. I'm like, no, like I've spent a year already building my relationship with her. She's my right hand woman. And I, I know deep in my heart that if I support her and what she's doing, if I have a compassionate approach to this, she's going to be mine for life. And she's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. She's a workaholic. And I'm literally, as we joke, like I'm literally forcing her to take time off. Cause I'm like, if you're this amazing, you're working all the time. How amazing are you going to be if you have time off to yourself? <laughs> uh, but Right? I've gotten a lot of advice for things like that. Oh, just, just get rid of her. And I was like, but that's not how it works, guys. Like, you don't get really amazing, really loyal people that way. And, like, now she's training my other generation of employees, and she gets me to the core. I've shared some pers I've shared personal things about me because it affects how I work. If I feel like shit because all this stuff's going on, she kind of needs to know that I'm not going to be productive that day. But that is my personal culture and approach. It's not always appropriate in certain environments. However, right. it's made us very close. And you better believe she picks up slack all the time when she needs to. And I never asked her to do that. Right. And I love the one thing that really that you, you brought it up before I could mention it is loyalty. By creating the right culture for you and your team, the loyalty is unbelievable i mean i yeah. i can speak to that with my team too being a, a different kind of team although many of my team members are creatives as, as well because you know we do digital marketing so there is the 
graphic design, the copywriting, and all those things are creative. And all mm -hmm. those things, you know, require a good sense of a sense of humor, as you uh, as we talked about in your in your bio. But it also, you know, it it allows. You know, I've got to. They've got to trust me, and I've got to trust them to do the work and do it well. But to also let me know if they're having a shitty day, and you know, they might need to take off instead of doing the work because they'll do better work for me yes. for our clients if they're in a better mental, physical state, whatever the case may be. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I have a team member who just went through a very unexpected, unbelievable, life shattering thing. And she bounced back, you know, but, you know, she came to me as soon as she, it was happening, let me know. Yeah. And, you know, and, and kept, you know, kept me updated on her status, you know, to let us know because, you know, she's got kids and all these different things and, you know, and it's like, okay. And we jumped in and we jumped in and, and took her place where we could. And we told the other clients where we couldn't that, you know, this happened and she'll be back as soon as she can be back and we'll make up for it then. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and, you know, she was, but, you know, if, if we didn't have the kind of company culture here, team culture here, yeah. she could have potentially had that major life event, not told me about it and just disappeared and ghosted me for a week. And I would have been thinking, oh my God, I need to fire this person. After all these years of working with her, she's wonderful. She's fantastic. She just suddenly ghosted me and she better, you know, she better have a damn good excuse or I'm going to fire her <laughs> when she comes back. You know, right. I, you, you can't, ha you cannot have that attitude because that's making assumptions yeah. and things that you can't yeah. make, especially with someone who's been with you for a while. And yeah. it's, you know, you can't always go to, oh, well, they did this, so I, I got to fire them. No, no, that that's not yeah. building a great culture. I mean, yes, there are times, there are incidences where the the grievances is, is bad enough that it is required to let someone go. But, you know, it's, you know, unless you're not paying attention to your team and what they're doing and their performance and things like that, you know, you don't normally have a shocking event where it's like, oh, my God, I have to fire this person because they just did X. Well, right. you know, usually it's not usually something that just randomly happens out of the blue and you have to fire them. There were things that there were clues and things that led up to it. And if you have a good, solid company culture team culture and relationship, you're going to see the signs before it gets there. And, and you, you do that with your team. I do that with my team. And mm -hmm. that is something that's really key, especially in today's, you know, I mean, everybody says the great resignation is, is upon us and it really is. And if you don't take care of your team and you don't pay them well, and you don't support them in all the ways that you can, they're going to go elsewhere. So, you know, you want to keep, and that, that yeah. kills your sustainability, your growth, all those things. And you have to start over from yeah. scratch with that, with that role. Yeah. That great resignation is very amusing to me because part of what they're calling the great, what, no, it's the great, they are calling it that, but part of it is people stopped working 80 hour weeks. They just work their 40 hour weeks. They were supposed to work. People like who degree resignation. No, honey, people realize they can have work life balance. And they're not going to put up with your crap of making them work 80 hours a week. Um, and we've always supported that. As I've told, uh, a, another secret is having volunteerism uh, built into your business. I can, I can tell you by experience, assholes don't volunteer. So if you don't want line cheating employees or people who really fold themselves and are going to put it in, you make volunteerism required like it i i know it's real easy not to do it's real easy to say i have these three hours monday morning and i should be working but instead i volunteer m my monday mornings and that's our volunteer time for our business now my part-time people don't have to as of yet because right. i'm not paying salary to to use of that time but my salary workers janelle and i volunteer during that time and that's it's awesome it's a huge it, but it, it's also a really intelligent decision, Sophie, <laughs> because oh, I don't yeah. have lying cheating people because lying cheating people don't volunteer their time for other folks. They don't care about right. their community. Really. So, right. uh, or they'll complain about things, but they don't do anything about what they care about. 
uh, and we do things very differently. So I have seen a definite dif difference there. And uh, yeah, I completely agree. I've I've had to fire an employee, but it was because I was giving her a chance. I gave her several chances and her skill set did not meet up with what she had told me it was. And that's yep. fair. I think it was yeah. also fair that I hired her knowing she had some um, she has some disabilities. She told me one of them, and I don't think she's quite aware of the other ones. <laughs> she's not self-aware. So right. we parted ways. And afterwards, I talked to people in my industry, and they're like, oh, it's so amazing you gave her a chance. No one gives her a chance. And I was like, and I, I give feedback. So not only did she get an opportunity to make a go of it, she got real usable feedback on what the problem was so that hopefully she can fix it in the future. Um, but yeah, that's, it's very important. As, as you say, if you leave, if you leave an open line of communication, as, as like everyone says, you have to lead from within. You have to be a part of the team. You can't be above the team. You have to inspire from within. And as I, I, I was thinking earlier, when you're talking about loyalty, you have to be loyal to them. Yes. It's a two way That's street. Really loyalty is a two way street. Yeah. Trust is a two way street. All of it is a two way street. Yeah. It really is. It's not one sided. Yeah. You Definitely. can't just take the first excuse to like fire somebody or, um, I don't know, different things like that. As you say, not, not making that, oh my God, how dare they assumption, but going, hold on. They've had a whole year of being really amazing to me. Maybe I should check in. Maybe something's really wrong and I need to check in with her to make sure she's okay. And like, that's my first instinct with people who work with me. And yeah, I think that, that makes it a really great relationship. It means that they're going to keep coming back to me. And when I train someone to be amazing, that means they're not going to leave me because someone else offers them more money. <laughs> because Absolutely. they can't. They can't offer what I'm offering them, which is the mentorship and the incredible support I'm offering them. So, yeah. Absolutely. No, I love this. And we could talk all day about this, but it is about time to wrap it up. Yeah. So let's let's talk about where people can find you. Um, any kind of offer you may have from our listeners that they you know may want to take advantage of. Um, you know, I know you're a different industry than most of my guests, but you never know. So let's put you out there. Where can they find you? Um, you know, what's a good place to learn more about you? Uh, one of the first place, the very, very comprehensive place is my website, uh, senuradesign.ca. Uh, you can also find me at Senura Design on most social media platforms. You can find my account there. I am the only Senura Design uh, I let's see, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn are on me. You're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, don't be salesy. Otherwise I won't connect with you. Uh, and then I do, I don't, I didn't really come with an offer, but if you go to my website, uh, I do have a free quick little checklist of, uh, things, basically things to ask before you hire a professional. Um, and that is a contractor or an interior designer or a decorator or a stager, uh, things you really should be asking questions of before you hire people. So you can sign up for that on my website. Uh, and yeah, you'll, you'll find me on socials. I'm around. All right. Sounds good. So Melissa, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm so excited to have you and have that same, but different perspective, uh, <laughs> coming from a different industry than most. And yeah. to my listeners out there, thank you for listening. If you heard something that you think someone would want to hear, be sure and share it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And I will see you all again next week.